Hello everyone. My name is Witawa Srisan. I'm here from University of Nebraska at Lincoln. I will be giving a talk on SEMIO, a semantic equivalence analysis framework for obfuscated Android applications. Statista has reported that there were 26.6 million malware samples that were uncovered in 2018. In 2019, the number have gone down, but it's still significant. There were 10.5 million malware that were un uncovered a year later. They also reported that on average, there are 482,000 new malware that have been created per month. And majority of these malware samples are done using a technique called repackage. So the idea of repackaging is that what attackers do is injecting malicious components into an original benign app and in effect make that app malicious. So from a security analyst's point of view, if one of the apps produced by your software company is repackaged into malware, it is critical for the company to find ways to detect those malicious behaviors and develop techniques to neutralize them. This requires analysis. And typically, as a first step, the analysts need to obtain the repackaged version of the app and then identify which component in that software has been modified. To, to identify these injection points, there are several scenarios that an analyst may encounter, for example, it is possible that the repackaged app would have the code out in the open. That's mean the component that the components that have been modified can be easily identified. And in this case, it's quite easy to find the modified code and then focus the analysis effort on them. On the other hand, it is possible that the attacker may try to hide some of this uh, malicious code that has been injected. And one technique that they can do is they can obfuscate it, the code that they inject into the app. Now, one scenario would be that they simply obfuscate the component that has been modified. And in this case, the idea is to hide what they did. But it's still quite easy to find which components have been modified. Another scenario is that they obfuscate every component within the app. That includes the one that they modified and the one that they did not modify. And again, the techniques here is to create a scenario where they can hide needle in a haystack. In order for you to find the injected components, you need to be able to work through all this obfuscation in order to identify which component have been modified and which have not. So this is a lot more complex to identify those components. To make this even more difficult, one of the things that they can also do is to lay several techniques, can be applied on top of it, and by the time you're done, the code doesn't look anything close to the original. It is also worth noting that if the idea is to just de-obfuscate it, whatever they have done, it is not guaranteed that once you apply the obfuscation, you would be able to go back to the original code. This is especially true if multiple layer obfuscation has been applied to the program. So what we did in this work is we create a system called SEMIO. The, the goal of SEMIO is to help analysts identify repackaged component in spite of obfuscation. By using SEMIO, analysts can focus their effort on understanding the malicious code instead of trying to find the need, needle in the haystack. As we will show, SEMIO is effective, is efficient, it can identify semantically equivalent methods without having to de-obfuscate them first. The rest of the talk go as follow. First, we provide the basic background on obfuscation techniques, especially the one that we use in this work. Second, we describe the SEMIO framework and the algorithm. Third, we report our empirical studies result. We first would like to discuss the obfuscation techniques that we use in this work. We refer to the type that we use as detectable by static analysis. This is because this type of obfuscation does not involve any third party libraries such as encryption and decryption. Instead, it simply modifies the code structure so that the code structure looks different. There are five common obfuscation types, junk code insertion, code reordering, method indirection, function inlining, and function outlining. Uh, inside junk code insertion, you can do no-op insertion, where you insert a bunch of no-op operations, which basically does not do anything. You can insert branch. You can also insert statements that does not really change the program, but add some additional computation, for example, to the code. You can add 
you can add a couple of operations to a variable and then subtract off those operations. And at the end, the variable still contain the same value. Because junk code insertion is pretty straightforward, we're going to skip it for the sake of time. Uh, we're going to start off explaining code reordering. So let's assume that we have the following instruction, which is in dex statement. In this particular four lines of code, we don't really have go to statements of any kind. But one technique to add code reordering is to simply add go to statements. For example, we can replace the first two statements with go to i1 and, and then create this block as i3. Then you can add additional code that state go to i4 and then make the second line that we replace i2. Then we create another go to statement i3 and then create a label called i1 where that's the first line of the code that we replace. And by running this program, you're jumping around from one section of the code to the next. But at the end, the program still run exactly the same as before, except that you now add four more go to's. For method indirection, what we have is a method m1. And let's say m1 traditionally called m2. And if you look at the method call graph, that's what you find. What change would be creating another method in the middle between m1 and m2, so that m1, instead of calling m2 directly, it will call another method. And that method, in effect, call m2. So this, in effect, change the method call graph of the program. Function inlining simply means that you combine functions. For example, we may have f1 that call f2 and f3. In the inlining, f1 may only call a new function that combine both f2 and f3 together. Function outlining is the idea of taking one function and dividing it into a bunch of small functions. So graphically, you might have f1, and then f1 prime would have a few more functions inside of it. Fundamentally, it would do the same thing, except that you have to make several function calls in order to accomplish the same task as what f1 would have done. Next, we will discuss the SEMIO framework that we propose and discuss some of the algorithms we use in this work. The basic idea of SEMIO is to compare the original app with the repackaged app. As such, we have a static analysis engine called Gitana that we developed as part of a different project. Gitana operates at the DEX code level, so it can just take the APK of the two apps and then directly analyze those. Once Gitana analyzes those two apps, it generates two sets of basic static analysis information that include instruction graph, which lists every instruction of each method. Then we have method call graph. That is a general one method call graph for the entire application. Inside the instruction graph, it also embed data flow and control flow information. Once we have that part, SEMIO take the information and start doing some work. So first, it extracts intra-procedural control flow and data flow information from the instruction graphs. And then based on the information, it produces what we call the instruction, instruction summaries of the method. Uh, it then performs inter-procedure analysis by inferring method call graph. This is in case of you have method outlining and inlining. Then it performs semantic equivalence analysis. And finally, it produces analysis report that, you know, including the score of the two methods. The basic idea here is quite simple. There are a set of instructions in DEX that can change the semantic meaning of an app that uses this instruction. So what we do here is we tag this instruction, and they can be in the category of invoke, read, new, array, and, and such. For, for example, uh, let's say if somebody applied a junk code insertion, so it may involve injecting a few read instructions, such as I get, and write instructions, such as I put, to perform field accesses and store the retrieve value into some temporary register. These operations, in effect, add more edges to the data flow without changing the behavior. Branching type and return instruction can be used for outlining. We refer to this instruction that can change the number of operations without changing the semantic of program as mutation instructions. That's the target of our analysis. So here's a basic analysis flow. So we have data flow graph of the two apps, right? App1 and App1 prime. And App1 prime is the one that has been repackaged. Based on that information, we generate what we call the instruction summary. So we have IS1 for the app 1 and IS1 prime for the, the repackaged app 1. We then con con you know, compare the IS1 versus IS1 prime just to see uh, the, the similarity. And then we determine whether they are equivalent methods. 
If you were to look at inlining, one other thing that happened here is that we have method M1, so we produce the instruction summary of M1. And then when M1 invoke M2, we also look at instruction summary of M2. And if the method has been in line, we look to see if the instruction summary of M1 and M2 are indeed combined. Next, we're going to focus on the empirical studies that we have done in this work. In this work, we try to ask three research questions. We want to first evaluate the effectiveness of SEMIO at detecting whether an app and a semantically equivalent obfuscated version of that app are in fact semantically equivalent. The apps are identical, except that one has been obfuscated. The research question too is to see if SEMIO can identify repackage method in the obfuscated app. And identifying repackage method here simply means that what left behind would consider to be repackage method. Anything that it picked are uh, semantically equivalent. And then the, the research question tree is how efficient is SEMIO? So the way that we use uh, obfuscation tools, there are two types. One is Allen, which is a existing Android malware obfus obfuscation engine that can support those first five types. And then for function inlining and outlining, we just have an undergraduate student who is the last author of this paper um, went in and modified the code directly. To lay different types of obfuscation on top of each other, we divide them into group. For example, in the group G1, we just have um, applying T1, applying T2, applying T3, applying T4, applying T5 separately. And that would mean the one done by Allen. For G2, what we do is we apply T1 and T2, and then T2 on T3. So in this case, each artifact that has been obfuscated will have two layers of obfuscation. And then G3 has three, G4 has four, G5 has five, and we try every combination. For the inlining and outlining, we have three groups. One group that just have inlining, one group that just have outlining, and one group that has both inlining and outlining. Again, the last three groups are manually manipulated. Here's in terms of the app. We have app as small as 21 method, all the way to app that has over 7,000 method. The number of line of code include, and this is line of dex code, 139 lines all the way through 37,486 line. In terms of the number of inline and outline method for these apps we list here, uh, for example, if we look at text secure, we end up going into the code and, and create 10 additional method that has been inline. Uh, we also did 10 additional method that has been outlined. And then for G8, we just take some of those and combine them both inline and outline. In terms of metrics, uh, I need to define what we mean here by recall and precision. So let's assume, you know, hypothetically, that we have 100 methods in an app. And then we have non-equivalent modified method of 10. Semantically equivalent method detected by SEMIO is 80. Right? So what we have here in terms of recall is that we are able to recall 80 out of the 90. Right? We have 90 that are semantically equivalent because we have 10 that are no longer semantically equivalent. So that's 90. And we can recall 80 of them. So the recall percentage is 88 point, roughly 0.9%. In terms of precision, let's assume that all the ones that we pick are, are semantically equivalent, all 80 of them. In this case, 80 out of 80 would mean 100% precision. Now, let's assume that there's another scenario where we have 100 method, and there are 10 non-equivalent modified method. But at this time, inside the 80 method that sem SEMIO identify as equivalent, one of them happened to be wrong, right? So one of them happened to be, they are actually non-equivalent method, but SEMIO mistakenly identify that as equivalent. So in this case, the precision dropped because 79 of the 80 is right, but the last one is wrong. So that's 99% precision. Note here though, that in our evaluation, we achieve 100% precision for SEMIO, but the recall value do vary. That's mean that we can get highly recall in some apps and some somewhat low recall in some other apps. So let's look at RQ1. So we, we obfuscate 100% of the app, which means that every method get obfuscated. So for G1 and G5, what we, all, what we did is we just send the original app through Allen and we configure it to do uh, group one, which is one type at a time, group two is two type on top of each other, group three is three types on top of each other, so on and so forth. Then we have G6 and G8, where we have the original app that our undergraduate student go through and then apply inlining and outlining. Now let's look at the result from RQ1. Uh, in this case, what we are looking for here is the recall values that have been uh, produced by our system. Notice that 
this is represented as um, a graph that have multiple values. For example, in this, in this, uh, for this bar, basically represent the group one. So there are five run for each app. Each run contain one type of obfuscation. And then for this bar, we have group two, where each has two layer of obfuscation, and we go through the whole permutation. So there's several apps that has been created and run. This is you know, the third bar is for uh, for the three layer, and the fourth bar for the four layer, and the fifth bar for the fifth layer. So anyway, uh, what we have here is in terms of the best performance, A2 with the uh, group one performed best. It's sitting at nearly 100% nearly recall. And for the worst performance is in A5, where it's sitting around 77% recall. For G6 and G8, we notice here that our average recall range from 94.26% for G6 and 91.43% for G8. We have two cases where we have 100% recall in F4 and F7. For the lowest recall, we have F2 with G8 that yield about 80%. For our Q2, what we're doing here is for G1 to G5, we take the original app and modify it and then send that app to Allen where we can do group 1 to group 5 obfuscation. For G6 and G8, we take the original app and then have our grad undergraduate student modify it, and then he also add the outline, the inlining. The number of modify methods range from 2 to 243 across the nine apps that we use. So here's a recall value. Notice that A2 used to be doing quite well when it's just uh, testing the obfuscation without any kind of modification to the method. But once we start modifying the method, this, uh, this value go down. But again, A2 is a small app. The number of method that it has is not that significant. So a couple of changes to the method can actually make the difference in percentage quite significant. In terms of the best performance, A1 with just one type performed the best. And in terms of the worst performance, what we have is roughly 72%. And that is in A6, group 5, where we lay five layers of obfuscation on top of each other. In terms of G6 to G8, we have the average of lower than when we were doing our Q1. The average now is in the 80s range instead of in the 90s. And in terms of best performance, we have 99.18 recall in app 5. And that was one of the apps that, that was doing very well for our Q1 as well. And in terms of worst performance in G8 app 2, we have 48.53%. In terms of time, this is to be expected. The smaller number of method, the faster it is to analyze. But when our method get to be significantly high, the amount of time to analyze and compare a method for equivalency go f as far as 7,100 seconds, which is almost two hours. Similar result is also shown here, where the largest app with the number of method has the longest time to analyze. And again, the time here is not quite two hours, but it's getting close. It's definitely over an hour and a half. In conclusion, Sibyl is effective in identifying semantically equivalent methods in repackaged apps. It produces high recall. It also has high precision. In our experiment, we, we were able to achieve 100% precision in every app. It helps analysts to focus on malicious components instead of spending time to track them down. Sibyl outperforms another state-of-the-art obfuscation resilient repackaged app detector called F-Squadra. Sibyl can also be used on large real-world apps. In our paper, we have shown that we can use Semio to detect semantically equivalent method in apps that has been obfuscated by ProGuard, a commonly used obfuscation tool in Android environment. We also have used Semio to identify the code location where Pokemon Go was repackaged into malware. I'm now ready to take any questions. Again, thank you for being here.